Actually, let me just take you back to our top story a minute now. Um, the uh, family have testified before Congress about what they went through with uh, drone strikes. Their grandmother was killed. The uh, family's lawyer, who was supposed to speak to uh, lawmakers at that meeting, uh, was denied a US visa. Again, uh, as we were saying earlier on, so few people turned up in Congress to listen. This must have been a disappointment for the family as well. The lawyers weren't allowed into America. Let's talk to him, though. Uh, Shazad Akbar is joining us uh, now live. Sir, we're ever so grateful that you're... Uh, on the line there. Why do you think you were denied entry to the United States? Uh, well, thank you for having me. I think the, uh, the reason is very obvious. The reason is my criticism of U.S. drone program in Pakistan and the legal action I've brought since 2010 against CIA officials acting in Pakistan and against Pakistani government. And uh, the congressional briefing was one occasion where the clients I'm representing would have a voice to speak to American lawmakers who would also challenge President Obama's uh, contention that drone strikes are very precise and they only hit uh, militants, which is not true. Uh, Rafiq and his family is one living example of that who were before congressmen today. And there are hundreds of such people who are being represented by uh, our organization and I would have speak, uh, spoken on their behalf, but uh, unfortunately, U.S. government denied me visa once again. So, so what was the point of this briefing? It begs that huge question, doesn't it? The big elephant in the room here. Um, you're very much entitled to your opinion, surely, uh, but you weren't allowed to have that opinion to say what you thought. So what was the point of the whole thing? Well, the point of this whole uh, hearing was that uh, the, the, the American public actually need to know the alternate uh, facts which are from ground, that when President Obama speaks to them about drone strikes, that they are only targeting militants. That's not true because the drone strikes in Pakistan have been hitting a huge number of civilian population. There are uh, drone strikes which are problematic like the signature strikes or the rescue strikes and then those strikes which uh, are targeting women and children like uh, the family which is visiting US. And I think these facts were important and this was a good a forum for the uh, people of Waziristan to put forth their case so that larger American uh, public can understand what their government is doing on their na name uh, with their tax, uh, with tax, uh, tax money they're getting. And the important point here is that if you uh, look, there's a new survey which has come out today which talks about that American public, a large number of American public are now uh, against drone strikes if they are targeting civilians. And that is the important point which needs to be uh, told to Americans because uh, it is very clear that the U.S. does not care about international law and the argument being put forth uh, on international law issue is not going to be heard. But when we bring in uh, the civilian damage and a huge number of civilians uh, who are being killed, uh, that will actually bring the point home and hopefully uh, this whole madness will stop in Pakistan. Well, we've got you on the line now, Shazad. Uh, in one of your previous interviews, you talked about North Waziristan next to the Afghan border. You called it a concentration camp. Why do you use those terms? Well, this is a concentration camp in a sense that uh, the area has been completely cordoned off. No one can go in and come out of Waziristan easily. The people of Waziristan are just left to be, uh, to be there living under drones. And there's nothing uh, which can get them out. And they're living under uh, drones which are hoovering over their head all the time. And then there's a huge presence of Pakistani military. So 450,000 population of whole North Waziristan uh, is actually living in a concentration camp where they are being picked on the basis of what kind of clothes they wear, if someone has long beard or someone is driving uh, an SUV. And, uh, this is how they're being targeted, and at the same time, they're not really uh, in a position to leave the area either. Just a, a final thought while you're on the line there. Um, we heard very few members of Congress turned up, only a couple today. Are you disappointed by that? And anyway, what do you think about today's briefing? Do you think it's going to have any impact on US drone policy? I mean, it's given publicity. We're covering it. I'm sure other new newslets are covering it as well. But is it going to have any hard uh, reality check here? Is, anyone, is it going to do anything? Briefly, please. Sorry, I, I did not hear your question. The uh, briefing today, not many Congress uh, representatives turned up. Is it going to have any impact on US drone policy? Briefly. Uh, 
there's a hope that it, 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 it might actually have uh, an impact on U.S. drone policy because the lawmakers are being informed, uh, but uh, obviously we cannot say anything for certainty that uh, Obama, President Obama is going to uh, listen to some saner voices, but I think we are very hopeful that uh, it would have some impact. All right. Thanks ever so much for your time. Shazad Akbar there uh, joining us on the line.